Good afternoon and welcome to all the participants in the uh, today's webinar that uh, BBBA is organizing jointly with uh, our member Deloitte. We are happy to have over 70 registered participants today. And uh, this is uh, probably responding to the fact that when we ask you, our members, what are the topics that you would like to hear about in this unusual situation of uh, lockdown and uh, economic uncertainty, many of you mentioned that managing the impact on your teams, on your workforce, was one of the most important topics. We are very grateful to our partners Deloitte for putting together this webinar basically in no time for like a couple of days. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, here with us. We have uh, a distinguished panel of speakers, which I'm going to present to you now. Eli, could you move on to the next slide? Thank you. So you can see on your screen that uh, today we have uh, four panelists from Deloitte. We will start with Miglena Micheva, who is a managing associate of Deloitte Legal and she will speak on the hot topic of the latest developments on the legislative framework regarding the workforce. Then we will hear from Dmitry Popov, Director Consulting, who will talk about practical workforce strategies that put your people first. And last but not least, we will hear from Anna Buson and Kiro Traikov. Anna and both of them are managers risk advisory and they will talk about data protection consideration and cyber considerations. Before we move on, just a few things about logistics. You will be able to ask questions in the Q&A uh, button that you see on the bottom of your screen. The chat for the attendees is disabled, so you will not be able to participate in the chat or uh, to, to talk during this uh, webinar, but please kindly write your questions in the Q&A section and the participants will respond to you after they finish with uh, their presentations. Thank you very much. And now I would like to invite Miglena Micheva to talk about the legislative framework. Maggie? Hello. So I'll briefly present you the last legislative amendments uh, that are related to the workforce because the workforce uh, currently is um, also the, the most important um, asset for the employer, uh, but uh, it is also equally a very um, important cost for, for the employer. So uh, the legislator tried to create some conditions for the employers to act uh, more flexibly in this uh, crisis situation. So uh, the first thing that the legislator did uh, was to, to um, create uh, conditions for the employers to change easily the place of work uh, for the, um, the employees and also introduced um, possibilities for um, easier and faster uh, reduced working time and um, increased possibilities for paid leave and uh, the um, government planned to, to provide for certain payments to subsidize to um, help the business cope in this uh, difficult crisis time so what was uh, done first was to create um, a possibility uh, by an order an unilateral act of the employer uh, to uh, change the place of work of the employees and to send them to work from home currently uh, the labor legislation also knows this regime it's um, a, um in, tip, in two types of um, um, homework uh, uh, options. It is remote work, which is mostly used uh, when the services are provided throughout the um, internet facilities, throughout the uh, uh, internet, or the other, it's um, uh, more for the type of um, pr production of goods or uh, provision of uh, services uh, at home, for example, in case of uh, telephone services. Uh, this regime existed so far, but um, 
according to the current legislation, there should have been um, an in the, a change in the individual labor agreement or in a collective labor agreement in order to introduce um, this regime of work. Uh, according to the latest emergency um, uh, amendments, it is possible to introduce it uh, solely by an order of the employer that changes um, the, the place of work to the current home of the employee or to other place uh, that is uh, deemed to, to be suited for the purpose. Uh, a very important uh, question that many employers have nowadays is um, about the costs that the employer should uh, cover uh, in case of introducing uh, such type of work. In the, the current legislation, the obligatory costs are provided only for the remote uh, type of uh, work. Uh, that is, um, it is suited for um, services that can be provided throughout the internet. Uh, and um, the legislation is quite clear saying that the employer should ensure at his own expense uh, the equipment necessary for performance of the remote work and the consumables for its operation. For example, if you need to use a printer or um, uh, something uh, like this, uh, this should be covered by the employer. Also, the necessary software, uh, the technical maintenance and prevention of any other issues, um, mm, devices for communication with the remote employee, including internet connection. This is, uh, um, in fact, uh, mentioned very explicitly that the uh, internet connection uh, and expenses should be covered by the employer. Uh, expenses. Um, related to ensuring data privacy, uh, information and requirements for the equipment use and maintenance, uh, uh, ensuring regulatory compliance. Uh, also, um, if uh, the employer needs to use a monitoring system uh, to supervise the employee, uh, this should also be covered uh, by, by the employer himself and also other technical or document equipment. All this should be covered at the expense of the employer. Uh, for any other expenses, uh, it's uh, not explicitly provided that they should be covered by the employer, but of course, if the employer is uh, willing to do so, uh, there is no, um, no prohibition to do it. What other topics should be covered by this uh, order of the employer? Uh, for the so-called uh, work at home regime, uh, this uh, order should uh, cover the um, location of the um, working place, in fact, um, uh, the um, specific working place, not the place of work, which should be a certain city, a quarter, uh, residential area, etc., but the um, specific workplace uh, where the employee will sit and uh, do his job. Also, remuneration in accordance with the previously applied the payment systems, uh, manner for signing and reporting the work, uh, supply and the handover of the ready production, uh, consumables. Uh, in fact, um, for the work at home, it's uh, explicitly provided that consumables cost for the workplace and their payment should be arranged uh, by, the, by the order or by the agreement in the, in the ordinary um, occasions, uh, but it's not specified whether these should be um, covered necessarily by the employer. And also other conditions related to the specific requirements for work at home. This should be arranged in the order for arranging, uh, for assigning the work at home. Uh, for the remote, remote work, um, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, apart from setting the uh, specific place of work and uh, terms and conditions for assigning, executing and controlling the work, the order should um, cover the technical and other equipment at the workplace, duties and maintenance costs, other conditions for the supply replacement and maintenance of the equipment, and also uh, 
uh, it could provide um, a possibility for the employee to uh, acquire the individual's items of the equipment uh, which are necessary to perform the work, but this is not uh, obligatory. Uh, among the other anti-crisis measures uh, that the legislator adopted, it is uh, uh, in fact the possibility for a state authority or for the employer uh, to close down, to, to stop the activity, in fact, not to close down, uh, to stop the activity in the enterprise uh, or um, in the entire enterprise or part of it. Uh, or in the case uh, when this uh, activity is stopped by the employer himself, uh, to stop uh, uh, also activity of particular employees. In fact, uh, this uh, was already uh, an existing situation after introducing the emergency state in Bulgaria. Uh, so the legislative amendments just established uh, what already has been done. The more important uh, issue was um, to arrange what happens with the employees. In fact, uh, the employees uh, should uh, generally receive the entire remuneration uh, that is agreed under their employment contract. The other possibility uh, that the employers could choose is to establish uh, uh, part-time uh, work. Uh, for the full period of the emergency state uh, or for a part of this uh, uh, period. And in fact, uh, the uh, limitation is to set uh, such time of um, a part time that uh, uh, is at least uh, uh, half of the statutory working time. In fact, uh, at least uh, four hours per day. Uh, within this limit, uh, the employer can set uh, different distribution of the working uh, time, length and distribution of the uh, working time. Uh, another option, if uh, the employer is unwilling to uh, set a reduced um, working time, he, he can uh, send the employee in paid leave. If, uh, and there are two possibilities here, depending on the, what is the situation in the entire uh, enterprise or a in part of uh, the enterprise. If the enterprise is uh, uh, with stopped activity, um, then the, um, the employer can send uh, the employees uh, uh, for um, in paid leave without uh, limitation. But if the activities of the enterprise has not been stopped yet, uh, the employer uh, can um, uh, send them in uh, paid leave uh, only up to the half of their paid leave. In fact, uh, the law is not very clear. Is this the um, a paid leave for the respective year or is it um, for um, all the paid leave, uh, including the one from uh, preceding years? Uh, so the more conservative approach would be to consider the leave uh, for the current year only, but uh, this is yet to be seen how uh, the administration and court will uh, interpret this uh, provision. And of course, for certain um, categories of employees that um, are in uh, more unfavorable condition, uh, they need more protection like uh, uh, pregnant uh, women or um, uh, uh, mothers of uh, children uh, uh, or um, permanent uh, um, persons with permanent disability, uh, they can request at any time during the emergency state um, paid or unpaid leave uh, and uh, the employer is obliged um, to let them go in uh, leave. A uh, very important note here that um, according to the final text of the provision, there is no opportunity for the employer to send the employees in unpaid leave upon his uh, own will, upon his own discretion. This could be done only um, upon request of uh, the employees. And uh, I'll um, mention a few more words um, about the um, 
the measures uh, that the um, uh, government uh, decided to take in order to, to subsidize, to help the business uh, to go on in this uh, difficult situation. Uh, in fact, um, this is a, a very fresh news from today. Um, all the employers that are, are eligible um, uh, for these um, a subsidy, they can go and apply uh, for it. So what, what is the, in fact, this uh, help, what is it about? The, the, um, during the validity of the emergency legislation, in fact, during the emergency situation in Bulgaria, uh, but uh, for a, a period of more than, uh, no, uh, f not more than three months, uh, the eligible employers can receive up to 60% of the amount of the insurance income for uh, 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 the beginning of uh, this year, uh, which will be paid by the expense of the unemployment uh, fund uh, of the state social security. And um, what are the eligibility criteria to receive such um, help from the government? It's to, to have the um, activity in the enterprise suspended due to, due to emergency state or to have um, uh, reduced working time. And uh, in this case, um, the, the help, the aid will be proportionate to the time that has not been worked off by the employee. Um, the employer should work in uh, some of the branches um, um, selected by the government as the most vulnerable uh, ones, such as retail, restaurants, hotels, etc., or uh, any other employer that uh, can prove a reduction of uh, at least 20% of the revenue in um, um, that can prove this 20% uh, reduction in his revenue in uh, March. Another condition is to keep the jobs for the um, employees uh, that are funded uh, through this um, regime and uh, uh, to pay the full amount uh, of the remuneration and also the social contribution. So each employer should uh, make calculations whether um, he can um, take this burden and continue uh, working um, under these uh, conditions. And there are some also branches, uh, some industries that are excluded uh, from the possibility to receive uh, the aid. These are agriculture, financial and insurance activities uh, and uh, some others. So the details are all about uh, this program are all already available. And uh, you can see them, um, all the details on the sites of the employment agency and also on the sites of the uh, government. So good luck uh, if you decide uh, to, to try this, um, uh, this um, regime. So uh, that is all from me. Now I'll give uh, the floor to my colleague, uh, Dimitar Popov, uh, to tell you more about the management of the workforce. Hello, everybody. Uh, pleasure to talk to, to you all back remotely today. Um, without a lot of further ado, conscious of time, I, um, I wanted to set the scene of what I'm about to talk to for the next uh, 10, 12 minutes. Back in January, ahead of the uh, Lunar or Chinese New Year, as, uh, as we call it, especially in Bulgaria, um, health concerns were uh, still growing. But um, my colleagues from, from the region conducted a survey in China of uh, human capital policies and uh, practices. The survey attracted over, a, I think, over a thousand responses from enterprises across multiple industries, private, foreign-owned, state-owned enterprises, um, as well as not-for-profit uh, organizations as well. Before I delve into further detail, I just wanted to share some uh, highlights and statistics from the survey. Um, the survey shows that from the beginning of the um, COVID-19 um, outbreak, <clears throat> the immediate focus of employers has been on ensuring the uh, health and safety of their employees first, which is, which is a great piece of news. 90% of, of all employers believe it is quite an urgent requirement 
to provide employees with remote and flexible work options. Um, of course, there are industries with constraints here. So energy, resources, industrial companies encounter the biggest ones uh, in terms of offering flexible working and uh, remote solutions, which is a case we all observe in Bulgaria as well. Um, what these companies have tried to focus instead on was to provide epidemic protection. So they've tried to ensure sanitation, personal protective equipment, and uh, last but not least, safety of the uh, workplace environment. Some entities uh, are also focusing uh, on addressing their people and sort of employees' psychological stress, which is also becoming a significant factor nowadays that we've changed our daily routines uh, so much. Um, the decisive actions taken by authorities across our continent as well uh, have caused the business community to consider um, quite a lot of the um, adequacy of its own preparedness measures, the ones that they had in, uh, in, in, in advance. So given the importance of people to every company, uh, they need to plan to respond to employee needs during the unfolding change. And we observed three deeply connected dimensions of, uh, of an organization. The work, which is also the what, workforce or the who, and workplace, the where. And uh, drawing on lessons learned in prior crises, for example, SARS, we offer the following 20 practices and strategies for consideration. I will begin with the work. And the first one you see on the screen is uh, establish a business response and continuity office. I'm sure this is a topic a lot of you have already been thinking of. Um, our thoughts here revolve around the immediate setup of a cross-functional team to develop a coordinated enterprise-wide uh, response effort. So many, many global and regional organizations had prepared pandemic plans um, for the outbreak of um, H1N1, which was the, the swine origin um, influenza virus uh, about 10 years ago. And, um, and the current outbreak is a prompt to ensure that plans were kept up to date and, uh, and fit for purpose. So here, the practical advice is to determine meaningful activation and deactivation triggers. And the reason that we say that is um, companies need to understand a few key things. What's the critical staff and functions do they have, uh, what the, that they have? Um, daily standups of this cross-functional team can help guide the executives on where to focus their efforts and also be the um, kind of the, the integrated pulse for the employees, customers, vendors, and also the partners of an organization. Because once the crisis passes, companies will need to con the, the continuity team to reactivate in the future for similar situations. Second one is um, confirming the critical roles and backup plans. What we see here is that a lot of companies are already thinking of temporary succession plans for key executives and critical roles in the business. With, uh, with times passing by now, and wh what we hear is that the peak has not yet been reached, um, there is an increased risk that key people may become temporarily um, unavailable due to quarantine or illness. In such events, the board and the management team need to have clear alternatives. There should be both uh, short as well as longer term plans for running the business, which include scenario planning, both for um, revised decision rights, for example, or accountabilities, and your escalation paths for urgent decisions. Number three is um, to evaluate the actual work of your company and how it might be changed. Um, what, what we're trying to say here is um, to identify what work really requires on-site attendance. So many of us are shifting uh, our face-to-face -face meetings to stuff like the one we're doing at the moment or other type of teleconferences. And we're leveraging more and more of the technologies um, available to us to reduce the risk of virus transmission. So, um, so a combination of those technologies, remote access, 
cyber, which is a topic my colleagues Anna and Kirill will touch upon in a bit, um, practices and policies, safeguards and training, all needs to be in place to support such a wide remote work deployment where possible. And the key question here is, of course, what can be done if work cannot be made remote, which is the case for many organizations? In this case, uh, you can evaluate what safeguards can be put in place. Examples already um, exist with including revised uh, cleaning protocols at companies or personal protective equipment. Uh, quite, a, quite a popular topic today, by the way. Um, last but not least, we should be able to understand what work is critical and what can be deferred or deprioritized. So businesses can understand where their focus needs to be, focusing on the most important tasks and um, empowering the teams to be creative in how they deliver the rest, which is the non-essential work in, in ways that minimize the unnecessary risk or, uh, or exposure for them. So if I move on to the second one, if you remember from the three deeply connected dimensions, the workforce, some of the trends we saw here um, to begin with is show up for your people or set the tone at the top. How leaders behave during critical moments leaves a lasting mark on the entire um, corporate culture of a company. So I'm sure you would agree panic and also um, overreaction is not helpful. However, neither is um, uh, being complacent or not giving the impression that leaders are downplaying the situation. Modeling behaviors in such situations are when you're proactive, consistent in messaging. In a period like this, there are so many unknowns, unknowns sorry, and a vague timeline as well as, um, it, so, so people, are, it's quite natural for people to look up to leadership for direction and confidence. And uh, let's not forget about the future because if there is a disruption, um, one would tend to believe there would also be a recovery, right? Um, next one would be to develop a plan for the, for the whole workforce. It's not uncommon for employers to um, overlook their uh, situation when it comes just to employees, but that's not the entire workforce we mean here. There's also a lot of contract workers, vendors, and, um, and partners in that case. So our advice is to identify all the critical contributors to the business and ensure that they are included in the plans to keep the entire workforce uh, safe. Defining the communication strategy and making it visible. So the team expects accurate authoritative information. They also need transparency, which makes the most important players in your communications plan the frontline management, uh, it's really important for them to outline communication plans with team leaders so they know what to expect and also what their role is. Educating people about COVID-19 symptoms and preventions. So it's encouraging to see uh, for so many organizations now that caring for people is the first priority. And uh, we observe many businesses, businesses sorry, uh, strengthening uh, safety education, uh, establishing self-protection guidelines, increasing awareness of risk prevention. And uh, most often the human resources specialists can identify the most at-risk employees and prepare them for some alternative um, work arrangements. Establishing employee support procedures. So a larger businesses um, usually consider a dedicated hotline for inquiries from employees. That could be phone, could be email. This way, um, they can also understand what's happening with their people, especially for those of us uh, who, where uh, remote working is not really an option. Um, th that those type of companies can consider bringing in medical experts to facilitate questions and answer sessions, helping people stay aware and uh, most importantly, stay safe. Developing workforce labor plans and conducting scenario um, analysis. What we mean here is to think ahead to how this situation could play out, including probably really important here, the, the actual recovery period. So it's key for the leadership to consider in advance how to restart 
the business once, uh, once it was disrupted already. Uh, some things to keep in mind are that quarantines and travel restrictions, for example, could mean the time to ramp, uh, ramp back to, uh, to the full capacity may be longer and more complicated after, for example, a factory has um, uh, went uh, through a planned shutdown. Restarting the operations would require an additional level of labor planning to consider, um, for example, the staffing levels or the sanitation requirements, or if you have visitors and contractors, the policies for these. Uh, for operations restarting with lower staffing levels, uh, product quality may be an area too. That's a focus that could be required to make sure we don't compromise on the quality. Creating strategies for temporary labor reduction and be ready for a slowdown. Um, the need for the current workforce may temporarily be disrupted. And that's the case for many, for many industries, including uh, our local ones in Bulgaria. And uh, you'll need to decide how to handle this. And um, in the past, we've seen, we've seen employers manage labor excesses through the use of leave balances or implementing additional leave in times of uh, cash flow crisis. At this point, I guess not just us, but n none of us knows how long this disruption will last specifically. And uh, reducing staff prematurely may have long-term negative um, implications. Preparing plans for site disruption and reactivation is another topic. So in the event um, an entity has, has to close the doors for non-critical workers for a period, uh, also needs to determine a communications plan about how you communicate with everybody including the contractors, as I mentioned already, and the vendor uh, partners too. Um, so disrupted companies elsewhere have also been doing checklists to determine when employees can return to work once the all clear is given. Developing clear protocols and obligations for employees who are at risk. So, uh, all employers need to have these uh, to ensure their people know they must self-report in the case of high risk travel or close contact with uh, individuals who may have been um, tested positive uh, of, uh, of the coronavirus. Economically vulnerable employees may be re reluctant to self-report, which, which is an interesting uh, piece, due to the potential income loss. So, while we would all rather provide incentives for reporting, there may need uh, to be some more clearer um, um, information about the consequences for employees who are at risk and not reporting. So if possible, employers should look for ways to bridge the income loss. In addition, it's worth establishing um, guidelines for when these people are clear to, uh, to return to work. Reviewing the leave policies. Maggie spoke about leave uh, just, just now. Um, including paid sick leave programs, statutory leave. In general, the eligibility criteria for medical leaves of absence, such as doctor notes. So um, what employers can consider here is whether the eligibility criteria uh, should be temporarily changed in this period. So let's, uh, where our thoughts evolve here, uh, it's important to aim to strike the right balance between protecting sick leave from abuse on one end and protecting the general workforce from uh, potential infection. Preparing for increased absenteeism and work refusal. So absenteeism will inevitably increase as health screening uh, protocols are enforced and, uh, and people, uh, basically people will be showing, uh, begin to show symptoms, uh, they, they should start staying more at home. School, uh, schools are closing, there are travel restrictions, Personal concerns will also contribute. So um, you also need to be ready for an increased number of work refusals and how to best manage those situations. Last but not least is the um, potential anti-discrimination. What we mean here is uh, discrimination based on a person's um, ethnicity, for example, has no place in an outbreak plan. Um, while recent travel to uh, abroad to foreign countries or close contact with, with people who have traveled is an appropriate criteria to distinguish between workers. Ethnicity is not. And uh, 
making sure the employees understand that creates a difference. So uh, when employees are reintegrating into the workplace post quarantine, companies should take uh, extra care about ensuring that they don't suffer um, they, that, that they don't suffer discrimination. The last uh, the last dimension, the where, preparing the work site for containment and uh, contamination. So companies should ensure the safety of working environments by uh, basically thoroughly cleaning, disinfecting workplaces. Uh, and in the, in the event when an employee has been suspected of being infected with the virus, uh, there should be a clear process in place to how to remove uh, the person from the facility, how to help them, how to uh, properly treat the facility um, afterwards. Updating travel and meeting protocols. So for organizations where there is a lot of travel a lot, uh, with high travel needs, especially international ones, uh, assessing the impact of the epidemic on travel is quite key. Um, a lot of companies already ended up with uh, people stranded in uh, away from their home um, locations when the travel restrictions were introduced. Reviewing the social media policy and guidelines. That's a pretty trendy topic these days and uh, making sure that the social media policy is properly defined during this period is quite key. So it should provide clear guidelines with regard to how employees can talk about your business and uh, the impacts of COVID-19 on operations and employee health and safety. This is why we think companies should provide employees with an internal channel to report what they're seeing and feeling to ensure, um, to ensure direct communication as much as possible as an alternative to social media. At the same time, um, a good social media monitoring and sensing program may help you identify emerging issues uh, that are affecting your customers, markets, and uh, production regions as well. Last but not least, considering the sources of news and information in the workplace. So misinformation can create particular challenges for organizations. Employees must take it upon themselves um, to be the source of accurate, timely, and also appropriate information for their workforce. So um, you should consider creating your own news channel in the workplace if possible by any means, appropriately filtered and based on, on credible um, resources. Just want to finish off um, by saying a few thoughts. Even, even for companies that have not yet been adversely affected, and of course there are such examples, thankfully, we do recommend the management teams to actively evaluate their strategies for addressing workforce impacts and risks, and also to develop on the back of these uh, appropriate actions under the various uh, scenarios. Uh, COVID-19 may fundamentally challenge our culture, the way we work, the way we distribute our work, but it also presents a significant opportunity in the context of this topic that would be related to the creation of a, of a more resilient uh, workforce and um, one with more focus on, on its health, I suppose, and uh, well, also not to forget about the well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitar. Now I'd like to give the floor to our next speaker, Anna. Thank you. So I would just want to draw your attention to some uh, cyber and privacy aspects to this pandemic situation. Uh, during a crisis, it's very easy to forget security or privacy controls. However, if risks and their mitigation tactics have not been considered in advance, it can lead to major security, privacy, or compliance vulnerabilities. Not having a VPN, for example, while connected, connecting remotely, or not having proper authentication or access control for critical applications, or not encrypting data could lead to security breaches, compliance violations, data fraud, or loss of intellectual property. Concern about the spread of coronavirus has actually triggered the largest work from home mobilization in the history since now. Uh, let's uh, briefly review what remote work circumstances 
are making the organization more vulnerable to security threats and can be considered as, considered as uh, potential data security gaps. First, from, um, with respect to IT security and from the perspective of the employees, they could be uh, the following uh, risk areas. For example, violating general guide guidelines on processing, storing, or sending information, using inadequately secured private or mobile devices, or using unsecured Wi-Fi network, using communication tools that are, do not ensure adequate personal data or general security protection, such as the instant messages available on internet or using social media platforms for business purposes. Falling free to informational chaos with respect to the virus, which makes employees more vulnerable to phishing attacks. Not using multi-factor authentication uh, for VPN and other corporate solutions facing internet, having no better plan or alternative communication and work scenarios in the event that basic remote, that basic remote work resources become unavailable. For example, uh, VPN or communication platform are not available due to overload. Organization will be experiencing a very uh, high traffic to network remotely. For those less prepared, COVID uh, presents a challenge. There is a risk that the increased volume of network traffic will place a strain on IT systems and personnel, and that employees will be will be accessing sensitive data and systems via insecure networks or devices. From physical perspective, physical security perspective, uh, there are risks related to printing at home, transferring documents, not have enough uh, uh, proper space at home for remote work purposes and make it possible to damage equipment or have sensitive documents stolen. From organizational uh, point of view, uh, uh, the gaps may be related to having no fundamental business continuity measure measures in place and having no backup equipment uh, in event of power outage, uh, device failure, or such banal problems as malfunctioning of phones or headphones. Uh, they sh we may have experience. Uh, we may have a potential difficult access to people providing support on data protection and security. For example, information security officer, data protection officer, IT team, compliance officer, and uh, the employees having lower awareness of threats related to security and data protection, especially when. Uh, awareness rising training session and initiatives were previously focused on risk uh, during a normal uh, work and on, on uh, remote work. All those risks uh, are valid, but how can we mitigate them? So let's uh, take a look at some, uh, sorry, uh, some uh, typical solutions. First, we need to uh, establish remote work procedures. If an organization does not have information security and data protection procedures in place for remote work, remote work, it is high time it should develop and implement them. In such cases, uh, this will be a minimum requirement, requirement that address uh, the needs and the objectives set, set by the management. Uh, the increase in online activity can have a big implication on systems and data security, having guidance for people to uh, preserve bandwidth and resources may also reduce uh, the stress on the systems. For example, you, you may uh, advise your employees to use Zoom or Skype for one-to-one -one or small group meetings, using cell phones for, to free up uh, bandwidth for larger meetings or avoiding sending uh, massive files in favor of using tools such as SharePoint or Teams could also help. Uh, we recommend in general that the organization migrate as quickly as possible to remote working and uh, secure mobile computing standards if not already done. Uh, the organization should set up minimum security requirements. Uh, if remote work involves employees, users, their own devices, it is 
the organization should update them on basic information handling principles and specify minimum security requirements for devices and networks they use. Uh, free tools such uh, free tools should not be allowed, uh, such as email, inbox, or Eastern Messenger. They do not provide adequate level of data protection and are usually not intended for business purposes. The company should recommend and implement approved communication channels for these purposes. Uh, last but not least, education and awareness. Uh, it is the best to raise awareness before the crisis situation occurs. However, once we found ourselves in this emergency situation, we should include information on the um, data security protection into the well-established crisis communication channels, as uh, Mitko mentioned already. For example, one can make employees aware that they can be particularly vulnerable to phishing attacks in coming days involving uh, clickable information on uh, coronavirus. Actually, security researchers have already observed phishing emails posing as uh, alerts regarding COVID-19. Uh, so uh, this is time for organizations to remind employees of need to be uh, vigilant and uh, the, the dangers of opening attachments and things from untrusted sources. Uh, other awareness topics should uh, focus on security requirements for remote uh, access, uh, work from home setups, guidance on collaboration tools from IT. Be aware that uh, maybe not all your personal, all your employees know how to use collaboration tools and uh, share platforms. And uh, awareness on privacy and uh, security incident response uh, procedures. Uh, actually, uh, everybody should uh, be aware that in uh, this uh, not normal situation, the risk of uh, data security incidents and breaches uh, are very, very uh, significant because malicious actors are abusing the current global situation and uh, they are busier than ever in their efforts to disrupt operations. For example, the World Health, uh, Health Organization reports it, uh, that it the security teams every day fight a growing number of attacks against uh, their infrastructure. And the hospital in Brno uh, that is testing in diagnose, diagnose center for COVID uh, recently reported uh, that has suffered a very significant cyber incident resulting in cancellation of surgeries, for example. Uh, in this uh, Situation is very important to uh, make your IT security team available and contact, uh, contactable, and uh, you should consider um, redundancy of the critical uh, staff in this situation. Um, of course, uh, in case of uh, breach or incident, you should uh, once again uh, raise awareness on the on this type of uh, events. And uh, you, sh uh, you should regularly inform uh, the employees, uh, for example, by uh, sending short, uh, understandable updates on how the uh, safety uh, use tools engaged in the remote mode remind the possible types of um, incidents and how uh, potential incidents should be uh, reported. So, uh, Kiro may ask you for some uh, closing uh, words and positive notes with regards to the data and cyber security. Thank you. And uh, uh, just uh, some uh, wrap up notes uh, from my side on the cyber security and uh, working from home topic. Uh, of course, uh, organizations are now. Uh, uh, very much focused on the uh, cash flow constraints that uh, they would expect. A lot of companies start immediately uh, seeing uh, those uh, cash flow constraints. Uh, the plans uh, starts failing. Uh, something that we had in mind is not going to happen in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but uh, we should be ready for the additional investments that may, might be needed. Uh, 
not to mention immediately that uh, uh, to enable the remote from home on the scale that uh, we are seeing at the moment, uh, probably we need to add some more uh, licenses towards our VPN or to increase our VPN capacity or to increase uh, our, uh, uh, for example, accounts for Office 365 for other collaborative infrastructure uh, that uh, we haven't uh, uh, been needed so far. And also the IT and security teams uh, should be ready to defend their requests for additional budgets. Um, what we are seeing is that, uh, for example, uh, uh, the uh, IT and security projects that uh, have been postponed uh, for upgrades and uh, renovation of certain hardware and software equipment are now urgent and pending and they are happening as we speak. And, and I'll give you a quick example for, uh, from our experience. Uh, we have uh, replaced our VPN uh, at the beginning of the crisis uh, to handle the increased load of the, uh, of the uh, Deloitte people working remotely. Uh, and that was uh, done just on time before the, everybody was uh, sent home to work distantly. And so uh, this is a topic that we have to have in mind that uh, there are cost constraints, but uh, there are some investments that needs to be done at this particular time. Uh, and finally, uh, what uh, this uh, situation is giving us as uh, challenges, uh, we also uh, might take a, a, a positive look on this because uh, we have this virtual meeting now. Everybody is uh, uh, attending it. Uh, we are having multiple uh, meetings like this. And uh, what uh, we were thinking about the digital future is actually happening at the moment. And uh, we are seeing this uh, agile future that uh, we always try to uh, promote. Uh, happening in reality. We are changing our plans as we speak. Uh, we are doing uh, virtual meetings. We are doing things that we have uh, thought in the past that are not very appropriate or not very, uh, how can I say, the effect might not be the same. Uh, the other side might not be willing to accept this digital collaboration, but now everybody is on the same page and uh, it's unavoidable to collaborate digitally. Uh, so uh, we, sh we are just seeing uh, the future. Uh, the more meetings will happen digitally, uh, this will have impact on uh, how much uh, we work remotely. Uh, some travels might not happen uh, necessarily. And the uh, experience that we are having uh, with all the digital collaboration tools available at the moment, uh, we, everybody is seeing that it's not so bad. And also uh, we can easily tackle uh, some of the uh, challenges that we used to have in the past uh, to promote digital uh, collaboration. Of course, uh, cyber is everywhere uh, and we should uh, have our consideration about cyber. But uh, all in all the opportunities are here. We see the digital future coming and the digital reality. And for sure, we'll see changes in digital education. Uh, we will see changes in uh, how the administration is working. Uh, more and more, the e-government becomes a, a must. Uh, we'll see more working from home in the future. Uh, we'll see a, a lot of virtual meetings and events. Uh, now, at the moment, uh, nothing stops you from doing this uh, virtual, uh, this conference that you have planned. Uh, you can quickly reshape and do it digitally. Of course, with a little bit more condensed uh, topics, with a little bit more changed agenda, but now everybody is, uh, everybody is online. So uh, why you should postpone the, the event, but, uh, or make it digital, make it virtual and try it. Uh, this might be the new normal. Uh, of course, this situation will have an impact on a business travel. Uh, we'll see more uh, reduction of business travel, but uh, we can see also impact on the transport and the air pollution. Uh, and eventually we might see uh, improvement in the health uh, due to uh, reduced air pollution, for example. 
or uh, eventually more work from home uh, will have uh, less uh, stress for the people. So uh, this is uh, what I wanted to, to add to the situation. Uh, we should not uh, only look for the uh, constraints and the costs and the uh, challenges that we're having, but we also um, should be mindful for the opportunities that uh, are expected to come. Uh, so this is all from my side, uh, and I hope I give you a, a little bit food of thought about the opportunities that are coming. Uh, I'm leaving the control now to uh, to you, and uh, we are ready to take uh, Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirill, for finishing your presentation on such a positive note. Uh, I agree, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And there are opportunities uh, we're waiting there after this crisis. So whoever is able to grasp them will be successful. Uh, we have uh, one question in the Q&A session that uh, actually Miglena already responded to. Um, do you, Maggie, do you want to, to read it maybe for everybody to hear it? Uh, yes, in fact, um, the question was about um, which month should be considered for um, uh, deciding whether there is a, a reduction of the revenue. And uh, according, um, uh, with regard to this aid of 60%. Uh, so in fact, according to the instructions that have been published uh, very recently, um, if the company applies um, in April, which is uh, most likely to be the case because April starts from, from Wednesday, from tomorrow, um, it should take into account the preceding month, which is uh, March. And uh, here, in order to decide um, uh, what revenue to take into account, uh, if it is an existing company, um, this means a company that has been uh, established, that was established uh, prior to 1st of Mar March, which is, uh, I, I think, the majority of the cases, these are existing companies. Uh, so the company should compare the revenue of uh, this March with the revenue of the March of last year, 2019. So this is uh, my interpretation of the um, instructions as given by the employment agency and the government. So yeah, uh, the last year results should be compared against um, this year results to see whether there is a fall in the revenue the reduction. Thank you very much, Miglena. I don't see any questions in the Q&A session. I guess all of you have been very, very clear. Ah, actually, one just came up. Uh, but if you apply in June, what happens, Maggie, if you apply in June? Uh, in June, it's for uh, if uh, this uh, still continues. <laughs> uh, I guess we take uh, May. We take May and compare it against uh, May last year. Thank you very much. Any other questions from the floor? I don't see any in the Q&A session. Okay. So we are running a little bit uh, behind in terms of timing. So I would uh, now like to thank all our speakers. Oh wait, there is a question. <laughs> From the point of view of accelerating e-government services and solution, I imagine we would all now have a consensus on the need for this, but can we as BBBA put some pressure in our government liaison? I guess that question is for me. Yeah, it's Rosen. for you. <laughs> Rosen. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually, uh, last week we distributed a survey to our members to scan actually what are the reactions from PBBA members for the measures uh, proposed by the government for supporting the business. And uh, I'm happy to say uh, that uh, since then we've been in communication with uh, uh, 10 international chambers, uh, including the American Chamber of Commerce, Confindustria, the French Chamber, and many more, to uh, draft a joint letter to the government, on the one hand, uh, suggesting to create a consulting body consisting of uh, representatives of international chambers to consult the government in their 
uh, upcoming uh, measures for uh, for the um, for the business and on the other hand uh, to propose specific measures regarding the, the government as far as uh, the government is concerned this is uh, one of the topics and uh, i don't know about the state but actually we have a very good connection with um, the person responsible for this for sofia municipality uh, Vladimir Danailov, who is now deputy mayor for digital and uh, economic development. So I'm discussing with him to update us about the, the municipal services on um, accelerating e-government services. Ross and I suggest that we can have a separate conversation on that. Thank you for the good, good suggestion. Anybody else, any other questions to the speakers from Deloitte? No, we are starting to lose uh, many of our attendees because we are running out of time. So now I would like to thank Miglena, Dimitar, Anna and Kirill for having this presentation for us today, which is very timely and responded to some hot questions. We have to act quickly in this situation and um, you have been very fast in, uh, in your response. Thank you very much uh, and wishing you a great end of the day. Goodbye from me. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.